This is Real Organ Lifestyle with Andrea Fay and Jen Fiddler, two licensed real estate brokers who share their love of all things Oregon. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Real Oregon Lifestyle. I'm Andrea Fay. I'm Jennifer Fiddler. Today, we've got a great episode for you, and mostly the, the topic came up because it's something that's happening in the Valley right now. Yesterday, we got snow, which is very rare for the Valley to get snow. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Um, so, Andy, go ahead and pull up my little video. This is uh, in my backyard. Aww. Aww, so cute. And I still have my little, uh, I keep uh, some of my little snowflake lights up um, all through winter just because I like to look out and see some twinkle lights occasionally because it's so dark and stuff I want to be cheered up. So that's why those are on the fence. Um, but yeah, that's our that's our backyard. And we got, I think, two to three inches in a very short amount of time, which is not that much. But for the valley, it's a big deal. Yeah, that, you guys got a little bit more snow than we did up here. Um, I live in kind of a hillier area. And so I was coming down the hill yesterday when it was snowing and it was a little dicey on the roads. But um, we already don't have anything on the ground today and it didn't it didn't stick much. I'm looking out my window now and I don't see anything, but so yeah, very we, exciting. We got we got, I mean, a significant amount in a short amount of time and um, to the point where we actually had we were supposed to meet a photographer at one of our listings and get him started um, on all the, the interior shots and well exterior too um, but we we're having to change some of our game plan on the photos just because we we're concerned about the exterior photos possibly dating the property if for some reason the house doesn't sell right away so um anyway but we, we're not going to show that particular listing yet uh, because it's not ready to go public yet. But Jen has a great example of um, a listing that she did list in the snow. Um, Andy, if you could pull that one up, that would be great. Ah. Yep. On a rare occasion when it does snow around here, um, this one, I believe this was 2017 or 18. We got just a couple days of snow and we had photographers coming and I actually was ready, getting ready to go on vacation. And so I co-listed this with one of my friends in the office and he was out there shoveling the, the sidewalk and the stairs and we were just trying to do our best to scramble to kind of make it look good. And, and, you know, there's not much you can do in uh, these situations. This particular one sold in about a week, so it didn't take long. And, you know, everybody kind of understood. The one I think is funny is when you see photos where it's June and there's snow pictures. Yeah, that's, that is a prime example of a property that gets dated because of its photos. And that's that's what we're trying to avoid with this one that we've got coming out. Um, there's some there's some pros and cons to selling, you know, seasonally, and especially in winter, there's some pros and cons to being a buyer, pros and cons to being a seller, and so we're going to go over some of those right now, just because it's fresh in our minds right now. Um, so in winter time, you know, it's a little bit darker, and um, of course we're gonna experience some winter weather occasionally. Um, and for sellers, this can be um, actually, it's actually not a terrible time to sell. I personally think it's, there's always a time of, of year that, that can be better. However, I think winter is a good time for sellers. Um, there's not very much on the market to compete with. And so you're, probably going to end up selling the house. Um, and the, the buyers that are out there are actually pretty strong buyers. So I think that, you, you know, once you do put a deal together, those buyers are going to stick through it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If you're, if you're looking in the winter, you're obviously motivated. You're not just kind of looky loo shopping. Um, you know, I've had a lot of people reach out and say, should I wait till the spring? Should I sell now? Um, I did tell one of my clients the week of Christmas, I said, let's hold off because they were going to be ready to list like Christmas Eve or something. And I'm like, let's just wait until after the first of the year, just on the off chance that we maybe miss some people. But I think with the exception of like 
Christmas week and even that we didn't really see a lot of a slowdown. Um, it, it, winter time is a great time to sell. It sucks to move. I'm not going to lie about that. I mean, it's cold. It's, you know, wet. It's not fun, but, you know, it, it can be a great opportunity for buyers and sellers alike. And especially right now, because we have such low inventory. Mm -hmm. For anybody that's kind of on the fence or thinking about it, like, do it now. We have less than a month of inventory in the Portland metro market. Well, and with that being said, that means you're also probably, you know, as long as your house is presented well to the market, you're probably going to see multiple offers and see um, higher than asking price offers. So it's it's a great time, I think. And um, there are some things to think about, though. And so, like, you know, with the snow comes some safety precautions and here in Oregon, we get so little snow that we just don't think about these things sometimes. But I know in other states, it's like a regular thing to like, you know, ice your sidewalks and shuffle your sidewalks and make a clear path so people don't slip in ice and fall down and sue you and things like that. So I think those are important. And you're part of that is also trying to make the house welcoming and accessible to people that you're showing it to. Yeah, absolutely. And you kind of have to just let go of certain things. I sold the house in November-ish and it was a really rainy, just blustery day, the day that we had the open house and there was leaves and there was dirty floors. I mean, I had hardwood floors, but still, you know, I came home and I was like, just so annoyed that they walked with their shoes on my hardwood floors. And I'm like, all right, just let it go. It's fine. It's not that big of a deal. I can sweep and mop. So, you know, obviously we try and get people to wear booties as much as possible and be respectful of people's homes. That doesn't always happen, but um, there is just some stuff you're going to have to let go. And hopefully they take their shoes off on the carpet. But um, yeah, other than that, it's really not that much of an inconvenience. I personally would rather be moving my stuff when it's 40 degrees outside versus 100 degrees outside. Oh, absolutely. Moving when it's 100 degrees is awful for all parties involved. In fact, you'll probably get more volunteers to help you move if it's cooler weather. Oh, absolutely. Although all of my friends seem to disappear every time I move. Hmm. Hmm. Um, I'm one of your friends. I don't live close enough to be involved with the moving process. Yeah, I wouldn't expect you to do that, but there's there's a certain certain, you know, percentage of my friends that I'm kind of like, all right, guys, I've given a lot of hints. What's going on? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that happens. People just all of a sudden disappear when it comes time for moving. It, it <laughs> happened to us too, which is why we hired movers. And yeah. um, anymore, we won't. We will never not hire movers every time we move. It's so worth it. That honestly is a really good point to bring up. I mean, it's just so stressful getting ready to move. And I sympathize with people every time I'm in that situation. I totally get it. I, I understand where you're at. I understand where your stress level is. I understand what the enormity of a move entails. And I, I get it. It's not fun. But I had done probably four or five moves before I ever um, hired my first professional set of movers. And it was actually really pretty affordable. Um, and I actually hired them to pack all of my stuff too. And it was amazing because nothing broke. They actually knew what they were doing. It saved me so much time and they did it so much faster. I mean, it probably would have taken me a week to pack up the house where they did it in a couple of days. Yeah, I think that's it totally worth it. Um, and I, I, yeah, hands down, moving companies are great. We love them. And it does like, maybe you just save a little bit of money aside for that. And it's not that bad. It's not that expensive. And all of your friends will love you because they're not, you're not asking them to help them move. So, um, let's talk about spring and summer. So, you know, as we get closer to spring and summer, like, I don't know about you, but we're already getting people that are saying, hey, we're thinking about selling um, in 2021 and we'd like to put together our game plan and blah, blah, blah. And for some people that takes, it takes a little time to get their house in order um, mm -hmm. and they want to have plenty of time to be able to do it and not feel rushed. And so, you know, a lot of the people that we're talking to now are thinking about um, listing in spring. 
And there's some advantages and disadvantages to spring as well. So um, let's talk about some of those. So as far as spring goes, um, late spring, early summer, we start to see some of the highest recorded uh, numbers on properties. At least historically, that's what we've always seen. And so, you know, the the idea that you know, behind like actually listing in the spring is usually to time it with the school schedule. Um, so a lot of people don't want to move while their kids are still in school, especially if they have to change um, schools. And so it, it's easier if you can just go ahead and time it, get your house under contract, and then after school is out, then you can actually go ahead and get your house moved. And then um, you've got some time in there to get settled before summer break is over and then the kids are back in school. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it'll be kind of interesting to see how, you know, the pandemic really affects things. Um, you know, obviously nobody is going to school in Oregon. So it will be interesting to see if we still see that same seasonal effect this year. Um, we didn't see as much seasonality last year, for sure. So I expect to see that as well. Although, there is just a certain percentage of people where it's just going to be easier because if you do have kids that are online schooling and you have a lot going on, it, it can still prove to be pretty difficult to, to move. So I do think we'll see more inventory in the spring, but not enough to balance out the demand. I mean, we're so far under the inventory that we need for the buyers that need to be buying right now that we'll continue to see this market um, be strongly in the favors of the sellers for a long time. And I've been telling people that, you know, they've, you know, I have people that are frustrated. I have buyers that I'm working with that are just like, oh, there's nothing on the market. Do you think there's going to be more on the market in the spring? And I'm like, yeah, but it's going to get eaten up just as fast because there's a bunch of people like you waiting for that inventory to come on the market. No, you're, that is such a great point. And I think that this idea that there's going to be more in the future. Yes, there will always be more, but what we're seeing is it's more of like a trickle effect. So you need to be ready to to get that trickle. Um, and so I, I think you're you're absolutely right. This idea that that house, the perfect house is going to be out there and waiting for you in the spring, it, it may be out there, but you're also going to be competing with several other buyers. What we see in springtime is we actually... Yes, we see more inventory come to the market, but we see more buyers come to the market simultaneously. So you're going to actually have more competition with other buyers if if you're if you're purchasing. Now, it kind of goes hand in hand in this market. If you're listing your house, you're also probably a buyer at the same time because you have to figure out where the heck you're going, where you're moving, and that's always the big question. Um, you know, if you're moving out of state, then, you know, as far as our job is concerned, you know, we, we're probably not helping you purchase your next one. But if you're staying in the area, then that's also turning us into a buyer's agent for you, too. So that's where, you know, strategy still is very, very important. Um, but some great things about the springtime, though, um, when you're listing your house, you're obviously not dealing with as much snow, hopefully not in the spring. Um, it's a, on a rare occasion happens, but very, very rare. And at least the photos are gonna be really nice, you know, um, daffodils and crocuses are coming up. And so you've got a little bit of color and hopefully those photos are taken on a day when it's not pouring down rain. Yeah, I mean, the springtime is just gorgeous around here. Spring and fall and up here, as far as colors and what listing photos look like are my favorite. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything's in bloom. It's pretty. It's a little bit, the lighting is good with the spring, you know, those days where it's kind of sunny, but it's a little bit overcast. Those make for beautiful photos. It's actually harder to, for photographers to get um, better photos in the summertime. You'd be surprised. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can work their magic and do lots of great things, but shadowing comes into play a lot. You know, I'm, I mm -hmm. always look at houses in other areas and I notice that a lot with houses that I'll look at in like Arizona, for example, the shadowing is weird. And a lot of the houses actually end up looking kind of dark. So yeah, it's actually too bright in the summertime. And when you're, well, when you live closer to the sun, I think that's still a problem. 
And you're right, like the springtime, it does have just a nice bright feel, but it's not overly bright. And um, and you're right, those shadows do come into play. You notice it a lot when in the summertime interior shots, um, we actually have to close blinds sometimes just to make sure that the interior, you, you know, you see the details of the interior. Otherwise that light becomes so bright that it's actually distracting, like coming in out of the windows. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. So that's an interesting one. You know, we didn't even have that on our list of talking points, but just thinking about that, it, it really, it, it makes a difference how your house shows in photos and, and how it looks. I think, you know, we're in enough of a unique market that honestly I'd say it probably doesn't matter for the most part, you know. But I think, you know, personally, I see less foot traffic at certain times of the year. And one of the things that is interesting is I'll see less foot traffic sometimes in the spring and summer on a listing than in the winter. Cause I think people have to really like get out, get in and see these houses. And sometimes in the spring, it's easier just to go, okay, here's one showing I've decided to make a decision. Whereas people, you know, need to come back a couple times maybe during, during different times of the year. Yeah, no, that's, I think that's a really good point. Um, you know, it, it made me think also that um, with the snow that we've had, we actually have a, it's a lot of brightness. And in fact, just for this podcast, I've had to close more blinds today than I've ever had to. And the reflection off the snow is bringing all kinds of light into the house today. And that happens also with photos in, in wintertime as well. So it, light can really mess with you. That's why we use our trusty professional photographers. They're just mm -hmm. amazing. They are, and so much better at photography than we are. <laughs> yeah, I remember really back in the day, we didn't do a lot of professional photos when I first got into real estate. And I look at back at some of our photos that I had, and it was like, oh, I would never present a listing that way now. Terrible. You really can't. It's, it's yeah. just, you really can't if you wanna be competitive. So, you know, I just got a deal um, accepted yesterday. And in that, I, I'm not going to say where the listing is or, or what it is, but the house was kind of dark. Um, you know, it's, it's a dated house, but it actually has these beautiful windows. It's kind of a mid century look. So lots of large windows, um, and, and beautiful, beautiful setting to look out, um, through those windows. But what's interesting about that one is that one, I think, probably was a little overpriced to begin with, but also um, just the fact that it was kind of dark and dreary and then also wintertime dark and dreary. Um, I think that one, it was it sat for a while. So, you know, it, it does make a difference and, and the, the lighting I think makes a, a big difference in especially seasonal lighting. Yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, as far as landscape goes, one of the great things that I love about springtime listings is we have a lot of like cherry trees that bloom and blossom that time of year. I think they make some of the most beautiful photos when you see cherry blossoms in them. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they're a nightmare for your sidewalk and your car and stuff, but they are just so pretty. Yeah, beautiful. And, you know, in Oregon, we do get quite a bit of rain in the, in the spring. So we also kind of have to, you know, dodge rain clouds at the same time as we're getting listings ready. So the weather still is an issue. <laughs> it doesn't go away. Um, you know, we, we still have quite a bit to deal with, but you know, it's, at least it's a little bit better than snow. You're not icing your, your driveways and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I think that's all we have time for today. Um, next time we will, have another little episode and talk about some more remodeling projects. And those are always fun because we have before and afters that we'll share. So make sure you catch us on the next episode. Um, you know, any, any photos and things that we, we show on this podcast, we'll also put up on the website. So be sure to, to look there at realorganlifestyle.com. You'll find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And um, other than that, we'll catch you next time. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.